Hello YouTube, my name is Nero. Today we have some more Call of Duty World War II. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have the highly requested Craig class guide here for Call of Duty World War II. I've been saving this one up and I've been really putting it off because I did not want to put it out too early, right? I didn't want to be one of those people out there who was making videos on day one at level 15 telling you the best classes in the entire game, the best guns, and so on and so forth. I wanted to wait until I was familiar with the game. I have just under 24 hours of playtime now. I am now second prestige. I have decent stats, not the best in the world, but I'm learning as we all are right now. And over the course of my time here with Call of Duty World War II, I've played every single game mode. I've tried out pretty much every gun in the game. And in this video, I'm going to be going over what I believe to be the best guns and the best classes here at Call of Duty World War II. Though keep in mind, there are lots of guns available in this game, and I'm not going to be able to share with you guys a class for every single gun. That would take far too long, and this video is already going to be rather lengthy as is. If you want to stick around, feel free to do so. I do feel so you will learn something useful because not only have I played around with every gun in the game, but I've also tested them out in private matches. I know a little bit about their stats and stuff like that. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop into the Kray class guide. The first class setup we're going to be checking out here today is going to be my personal favorite class in the entire game, the MP40 with the Car 98K. So of course, we are going to be using the Rifleman Basic Training, which will allow us to have two primary weapons and swap those weapons a little bit faster. And we will be rocking the Mountain Division. Now, the reason why I chose Mountain over the other ones here is because I want the ability to hold my breath with my sniper rifle. That's a very big deal for me. And the reason why the car 98k is a secondary as compared to a primary is in my opinion, you don't need attachments on your car to make it good. Whereas the MP40 here, having attachments like extended mag and rapid fire are very good. Now, if you don't like the MP40, pick any submachine gun. I'm telling you guys, a submachine gun with a bolt action sniper rifle as a secondary is a very good way to play Call of Duty World War II. And when it comes to choosing your sniper rifle, I've gone with the car because it's my favorite one in the game, but I recommend any of the bolt actions. Here are the differences. So the Lee Enfield here has the fastest fire rate of all the bolt actions, and it also has a 10 round capacity by default, but it also has a very bad one shot kill zone. Basically, it can only get one shot kills from the upper chest and above, sort of similar to the M4 DA3 from Modern Warfare Master. Then we have the Springfield. The Springfield is clunky. It has very high idle sway. It's a clunky overall sniper, but it can one shot kill anybody from the kneecap and above. That's pretty good right? And then you have the car 98k, which is kind of a mix between the two. You get a one-shot kill from the waist and above, and it also has very low idle sway, and it's very it's very easy to use. It has good handling characteristics. So I've personally gone with the car. You unlock it by prestiging the Mountain Division. You get the MP40 for prestiging the uh, Airborne Division. I feel so overall, this is a very good class setup. When it comes to your attachments, I go with Extended Mag and Rapid Fire, though if you don't like Rapid Fire, Advanced Rifling is also very good on the MP40. I'm telling you guys, try out this setup. You will not be disappointed, or at the very least, try out a setup similar to this. Pick your favorite SMG, whether that's, you know, the PPSH or the Grease Gun or the Tommy Gun, where it is, try a submachine gun with a bolt action sniper rifle as your secondary. You are going to be pleasantly surprised at just how good it is. So when it comes to my grenades here, most of the time I'm going to be going with the Sticky Bomb. Here is some gameplay of the Sticky Bomb. I find that it's just way too good. You can aim it perfectly. You can have it land wherever you want it to land, whether that's on an objective or through a window or through a door. It just when it comes to a frag, you can cook it. Sure and that's fine but when you use a sticky it just you can place it so perfectly it just i've never been a big fan of sticky grenades let's be honest here i've always used frags but this year i tried out the sticky and it's fantastic in call of duty world war ii highly recommend on pretty much every class with a few exceptions which we will be discussing later on here in the video the next class we're going to be checking out here is going to be the tommy gun this class is incredibly good and i've used it so much that i was honestly worried that my channel was only going to be featuring tommy gun gameplay because i never wanted to put this weapon down so as you can see here i have the wilco thompson now how you actually get this is by leveling up your social score which i get is kind of hard to do right now because headquarters do not work but by leveling your social score you will unlock this epic variant of the thompson which gives you more xp and if you have an epic variant or even a heroic variant of a gun i recommend using it even if you don't like how it looks you get more experience which is obviously a good thing on the tommy gun itself i recommend extended mag and advanced rifling and we are going to be using the airborne division now some people are going to wonder why am i running advanced rifling if I do plan to run the suppressor a lot with the airborne division. 
attachment. The reason why is because the advanced rifling attachment actually negates the negative effects of the suppressor a little bit. So the suppressor reduces your damage range by 30%, advanced rifling increases your range by about 30%, and the way the math works, basically what it means is when you run a suppressor with advanced rifling, it only reduces your damage range by 8% as compared to 30%, which is obviously pretty good. And then when you take off your suppressor, which I recommend taking it off when you need to, you then have all the benefits of advanced rifling, which is very good. So I definitely recommend that setup right there. I can also recommend from experience rapid fire. Rapid fire and extended mag on the Tommy gun is actually pretty good, but if you're looking for consistency in most game modes on most maps, advanced rifling and extended mag is the way to go. My basic training is going to be espionage, which I could talk for a very long time about espionage. It's currently broken. I wonder if they're going to nerf it or remove it or do something with it because right now all you have to do is touch somebody with any bit of your equipment or your score streaks or your gun and they will appear on the minimap to everybody on your team like a blackbird for a short period of time. So with this particular setup, I am rushing around the map with a suppressed submachine gun that has pretty good range and when I hit somebody, they appear on the map. It's so freaking good because they have no idea where I'm at because when you're running the airborne division, you need to understand that suppressors are ridiculously powerful in this game, more so than previous years. And the reason why is in previous years, people would run suppressors all the time in the Call of Duty franchise. That's just what people would do. But you don't see it very often in this game because you have to be running a submachine gun and you have to be running the airborne division. So suppressors are more few and far between, so they're definitely more powerful. So I'm going behind enemy lines. Nobody knows where I'm at. I'm popping them with a couple of shots. Even if I can't kill them, they're still showing up on the minimap, which is incredibly good. I definitely recommend the espionage basic training with this particular class setup. And when it comes to your secondary, I recommend the M1911. A lot of people will tell you to go with the machine pistol. They'll tell you to go machine pistol with extended mag or maybe even do some funny setups with the akimbo. That's fine and dandy. The machine pistol is very good, but for me personally, I really do like the M1911, and I recommend high caliber. Now, I did some testing on this. The range at which you can get a two-shot kill with the M1911 with high caliber is actually much further than what you can get a two-shot kill with using advanced rifling on the M1911, even if you shoot them in the head. So in terms of securing a two-shot kill, high caliber is much better than advanced rifling, at least on the M1911, which is my secondary of choice. And once again, we have sticky bombs because they are freaking good here in Call of Duty World War II. Next up, we have my full auto rifle of choice here in this game, the M1941 Johnson gun. I know a lot of people are going to freak out about this. Nero, what about the STG-44? What about the bar? Well, we're going to be talking about the bar later on here, but we're not going to be talking about the STG because, in my opinion, the STG is a solid rifle, just not as solid as the M1941. So the 1941 has a very high fire rate. It's got pretty decent stopping power. It's a good overall rifle, and I recommend quick draw, extended mag, and high caliber. With the very tiny magazine you get by default and the high fire rate, extended mag makes this gun much easier to use. And then I also run ordnance on this class. And the reason why is when I run this gun, I find myself being able to compete with submachine guns up close and light machine guns and other rifles at a distance. It's a very good jack of all trades rifle. And as a result, I tend to live a lot longer when I'm using it. So I run the ordnance basic training, which allows me to cycle through my score streaks. It's a very good overall class setup, guys. I think a lot of people sleep on the 1941 because they think of the STG or they think of the bar, they hear about OP the bar is, or maybe they want to try out the FG-42 with its three-shot kill range, or maybe one of the semi-autos. People forget about the Johnson gun. This thing's freaking ridiculously good, so try out this class. I think you guys will be pretty happy with the results. Next up, we have my Search and Destroy slash free-for-all class of choice. Once again, we have the MP-40, we have Advanced Rifling and Extended Mag, and we're going to be rocking the Airborne Division. For the same reason we rock the Airborne Division with my Thompson class, I want to rock that suppressor. We also have Inconspicuous, which is a basic training that you get for prestiging your Mountain Division it gives you quieter movement and allows you to walk faster while crouched. While you're playing Surge and while you're playing Free For All, a perk like this or a basic training like this is pretty much required. You need to be rocking it. And so I use this along with Advanced Rifling on a suppressed MP40. Again, Advanced Rifling kind of cancels out the suppressor to an extent and makes it so you can actually take people out pretty easily without popping up on the map. Then, of course, once again, the M1911 with high caliber as my secondary. And this time, however, we're going to be rocking the Bouncing Betty, the S944. The reason why is when you're playing Surge or Free For All, you basically just drop this in a random place and people will run right over it and just end up dying. If you're playing Free For All, spawn in, run to a building, go into the doorway, place it down, and just go about your business. Eventually, it's going to blow up and kill somebody. They're ridiculously good in this game right now because people don't even look for them or try to counter them in any way whatsoever. So once again, this is the class up I recommend for game modes like Surge and Destroy or Free For All. If you don't like the MP40, another really good gun for those game modes would be the Type 100, 
the Type 100 is fantastic here in Call of Duty World War II because of how good it is at a distance. I gotta say, it's pretty bad up close against other submachine guns, but at those medium to longer ranges, the Type 100 is really good. My favorite attachments on this gun personally are Advanced Rifling, Extended Mag, or even Rapid Fire. They're all very good, and I recommend a class setup rather similar to this or the MP40 for the game modes Search and Destroy and Free For All. The next class here is going to be my shotgun of choice, the Combat Shotgun with Steady Aim and Advanced Rifling. So Advanced Rifling is very good on shotguns here in Call of Duty World War II, and the Gunslinger Basic Training is incredible for shotguns. So as you can see here from the gameplay, I am running around with my gun always in a fire-ready position. So if I, I see somebody like coming around the corner, or if somebody like jumps out a window at me, I don't have to pull up my sights, I don't have to stop sprinting, my gun is always in a fire-ready position. When it comes to the shotguns of this game, you may be wondering, well, why do I recommend the Combat Shotgun over the Luftwaffe or the Toggle Action or the Sawed-Off? Well, in my experience, the Combat Shotgun is the most consistent in terms of one-shot kills. The Luftwaffe is fine, but it is a double barrel, which you are going to be reloading pretty frequently. The Sawed-Off is very weak, in my opinion. I was thoroughly disappointed by that gun. And when it comes to the Toggle Action, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of semi-automatic shotguns. So I'm a big fan of Pump Action. I rock the Combat here. I do use the Expeditionary Force, which is going to allow me to have incendiary shells, which are incredible. You shoot in their general direction and they die. It's kind of OP at times. And then, of course, you get all the benefits of having a lethal and a tactical grenade, and you are constantly going to be resupplying your lethal and your tactical grenade. Now, if you're going with a tactical, I recommend using the, what's called a stun. It's called the British N69, but it's basically a stun grenade, right? Rock this. Rock the sticky bombs. It's really good in game modes like Hardpoint or maybe even Domination, where you're constantly running around and taking objectives, and people are always funneling into one area. A class setup like this is very good, and I highly recommend trying it out if you've been wondering the best way to run a shotgun here in Call of Duty World War II. The next class setup we're going to be checking out here is going to be the bar, and I know you guys have been wanting me to talk about this gun for a while now, because apparently the bar is the most broken and overpowered gun in the history of the Call of Duty franchise. Or at least that's what people are saying right now. Now the bar, I think it's a solid all-around rifle. I don't think it's as overpowered as people say. It's got a nice three-shot kill range. It drops down to a full ready distance. It's got a 20-round magazine, a pretty high fire rate, and it's just a solid all-around rifle in my opinion. How I like to run it is high caliber, quick draw, and rapid fire. Now, I know some of you guys may think rapid fire on a gun like this with a 20 round magazine. Well, check out the gameplay here. As you can tell, I'm going to be rocking the hustle basic training, which allows me to reload faster. And as you can see here, the gun itself melts people up close with rapid fire. It's actually pretty good and it's not too shabby at a distance either. If you don't like rapid fire on the barb, that's perfectly fine. Maybe replace it with an optical attachment or maybe don't run the infantry division and rock something a little bit different where maybe you don't have three attachments. But for me, I find this class up to be pretty good with the bar itself. I like the infantry division with rifles in general because I love having the rifle bayonet. The ability to have not only more ammo but to be able to take people out at up close by meleeing them and getting a one hit kill is fantastic to me. Not to mention moving faster while aiming down sights. So this is my personal bar class setup. If you don't like rapid fire, I recommend maybe going with a reflex sight, maybe going FMJ or a popular choice extended mag. Making so you have a 30 round magazine instead of 20. But yeah, I just I don't know. Maybe I'd have to play around with it more, but I don't find the bar to be ridiculously overpowered. I see a lot of people using it and they kill me fine, whatever, but it just, it's a gun that I don't see being broken, but who knows, maybe I'm wrong. The next class setup we're going to be checking out here is going to be our first light machine gun class of two different LMG classes I have for you guys, and we're going to be rocking the MG42. I would like to say that every LMG in this game is good, in my opinion. The Bren hits like a truck, the Lewis is kind of like a nice nice solid stopping power LMG that also has a decent fire rate. You then have the MG, which shoots pretty quickly. Then you have the MG42, which shoots even faster. And I chose the MG42 because I tend to prefer high fire rate weapons. And the MG42 is freaking fun to use here in this game. So we're going to be rocking that. We have extended mag and we have quick draw on here. You're going to notice that with this class setup right here, I am trying to bridge the gap between a light machine gun and an assault rifle. I have the airborne division, which increases my sprint speed and my ability to climb over things faster. And I I can run further distances. I also have scoped, which is a basic training you get for prestiging the infantry division, which allows me to move faster while aiming down sights and have less idle sway. Essentially, I'm trying to take my MG42 right here and make it feel like an assault rifle because in my opinion, LMGs are not exactly in a great place here in Call of Duty World War II. The maps are pretty tiny and in a lot of different situations, 
LMGs are outshined by rifles and submachine guns. So by using this class setup right here, I'm able to use light machine guns kind of as if they were rifles and it makes them a bit more viable, at least in my opinion. And it's actually quite fun to use and run around with. Now, if you don't like the idea of rocking the airborne division with a light machine gun, perhaps you will like this class setup here a little bit more. We again have the MG42, but feel free to swap this out for any LMG of your choice. We still have quick drops. I feel as though it's kind of needed in a game like this, but we also have extended mag and FMJ. Full Metal Jacket is incredible on light machine guns in this game. Not only can you shred people through walls, but you can also shoot down enemy air support pretty easily. I am going to be rocking the infantry division with this class. In my opinion, and I know people will disagree, the armored division is not that great for light machine guns. It's designed to be for light machine guns, but all it does is give you a bipod. And in my opinion, bipods are not that good because people are always rushing around here in Call of Duty World War II. And when they're doing that, you're kind of just like a stick in the mud, not moving. Sure, you have the power of a bipod, but just it's not that good in my opinion. I would much rather have the benefits of the infantry division, like more ammo, an extra attachment, and the ability to move faster while aiming down sights. Those are much better attributes for a light machine gun class as compared to taking less explosive damage and having a bipod right you see what i'm saying there we also rock the hustle basic training because of course when you're using a light machine gun reloads are a killer especially on the mg42 here it takes forever like i keep trying to reload cancel it but you can't you have to wait through the entire animation so hustle is definitely pretty good again my secondary of choice and then the sticky bomb here as a lethal grenade next up we have my personal favorite semi-automatic rifle here in call of duty world war ii the m1a1 carbine i loved this gun during the beta people hate it i don't know why people hate it i freaking love this thing i would argue of these semi-automatics in this game it is the best one the svt in my opinion is just really not that good. The Garand is all right. I mean, it's got a nice two-shot kill range. It's pretty manageable. But the M1A1 is so freaking good, in my opinion. And I like to rock the Reflex Sight, High Caliber, and Quick Draw. Now, a quick note on High Caliber. Some people may wonder if it's even beneficial on a semi-automatic weapon. It is on the M1A1, not so much on the Garand or the SVT. The reason why it's good on the M1A1 is it actually makes it so you can get a two-shot kill if one of your shots hits them in the head, whereas normally the M1A1 is going to be a three-shot kill at pretty much much any range. I like the reflex sight because when I'm using the M1A1, it's going to be at a very long distance. I'm going to be trying to take people out across the map like you're seeing here on the map Gustav Cannon and quick draw because I feel so quick draw is pretty useful on rifles and LMGs here in Call of Duty World War II. But if you don't feel so you need quick draw, extended mag is very, very good on a gun like this because if you have a fast trigger finger, that 15 round capacity is not really all that much. So you're going to find yourself burning through that pretty quickly. Basic trains can switch around a lot on the class like this. Look Lookout is actually very good, especially on maps like Gustav Cannon and maps where you're going to be utilizing a semi-automatic rifle at a long distance, but you also have a bunch of other ones. Like, for example, you could be rocking Prime to get another attachment and flinch less, which is obviously going to be a pretty good idea. Or you could go up here to Ordnance and do what I do with my M1941 and use this as like a camping weapon almost, where you're constantly picking people off at a distance and therefore more likely to be rolling through your score streaks faster and Ordnance will, of course, help out with that. There's a lot you could do with the basic trainings here with a semi-automatic automatic rifle, but those are my two recommendations here at the M1A1 Carbine. The tenth and final class for this video is going to be more of an objective-based class. It's another submachine gun, but I have no intention whatsoever of ever using a suppressor with this thing. I'm actually going to be rocking the PPSH with the extended mag, advanced rifling, and the armor division. This is for those really, those really competitive matches of domination or hard point where the other team is constantly throwing grenades and you need some protection from explosives. This is why I go to. I rock the armor division for obvious reasons to take less damage from explosions and fire and tactical equipment and so on and so forth. I rock hustle personally, but you actually have a lot of choices when it comes to your basic training here. So you could go with hustle, which I think is great on a submachine gun, but you could also go all the way down here and you could check out hunker, which there is some division overlap there, but it will allow you to throw back enemy grenades, which is pretty good. You could go down here to concussed, which would allow you to actually make it so you have two sticky grenades and a stun, which is obviously good and spammy for those objective game modes like hardpoint and domination. Pick your choice. I mean, you definitely should have a submachine gun class that is not all about the airborne division. It's also good to have classes where you actually do have some protection from explosions because there's nothing worse than getting in the lobby, going up against a party of people who are throwing grenades everywhere and having no counter for it whatsoever. But ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have for you guys here in this video. I told you it would take a lot longer than a normal video, but I went over 10 of my favorite classes so far here at Think Call of Duty World War II, and I hope you guys enjoyed them. Now, of course, there are some guns that were missing here. For example, 
example, the STG44, maybe the M1 Grand. Why didn't I talk about the Springfield? Lots of different guns like that that were not featured here. And the reason why is I'm not here to make a class with every single gun in the game. I'm just here to share with you guys my personal favorite classes so far here at Think Call of Duty World War II. And maybe further on down the line, I'll make some specific individual videos where maybe, for example, I make an entire video dedicated to showing you a class setup dedicated to the STG44, maybe one for the Springfield, or maybe one for the FG42 and its wonderful three-shot kill range. Who knows what the future is going to hold, but I want to make this video for you guys because I've gotten literally hundreds of requests from people to make a Cray class guide here for Call of Duty World War II. If you guys could, down there in the comments, let me know what is your personal favorite class setup to use here in this game. Again, my favorite is the MP40 and the Car 98K. It's such a good setup. I mean, just using a submachine gun with a sniper rifle in general is very good, so I highly recommend if you guys haven't tried it out already, go ahead and do that, along with the rest of the classes I shared with you guys here in this video, but once again, I would love to hear what is your favorite class in Call of Duty World War II. Let me know about that down there in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.